Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. The former French president, François Hollande, has urged the upholding of freedom of expression and the right to blasphemy as 14 suspects face trial over the deadly 2015 attack on the satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo. Most of the alleged accomplices are in court in Paris, but three are being tried in absentia. They are accused of helping the militant Islamist attackers who shot dead 12 people in and around the Charlie Hebdo's Paris office in January 2015. In a related attack, a third gunman shot dead a policewoman, then attacked a Jewish store, killing four people. The 17 victims were killed over a period of three days. The Trump administration has indicated that it will not participate in international coalition efforts to find and distribute a vaccine for COVID-19 because the World Health Organization is involved. It said it did not want to be constrained by the corrupt World Health Organization and China. The international effort is meant to speed up vaccine efforts and distribute it equally with the participation of 172 other countries. Meanwhile, U.S. President Donald Trump has been greeted by an ever-divided crowd in Kenosha as he visited the city of Wisconsin, where the shooting of Jacob Blake took place. Blake, a black male, was shot seven times in the back by the police in an incident on August the 23rd, which deepened nationwide resentment at racial injustice. Kenosha, with a population of only 100,000 people, quickly spiraled into heated protests. Prior to Trump's visit, local officials, including the governor of Wisconsin, had asked the president not to make the trip, fearing it would flare up tensions. There's so much hate running rampant in this country, and it kills me. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. You know, I don't want this for my children. I don't want this for, for our country. Make America great again? What? When was this country ever great for us as black people? When? You know, never. Comrade Duch, a former senior figure of the Khmer Rouge convicted of crimes against humanity in Cambodia, has died. He was serving a life term after being sentenced by a UN-backed court. Duch ran the notorious Chul Slang prison, where thousands of people were tortured and murdered in the late 1970s. As many as two million people are believed to have died under the Khmer Rouge, a Maoist regime that controlled Cambodia from 1975 to 1979. Thailand's king has reinstated his royal consort to the position nearly a year after she was stripped of her titles in a dramatic fall from grace. Sininat was stripped of her rank in October 2019, only months after she was granted the honours. The palace had said that she was being punished for trying to elevate herself to the same state as the queen. Sininat was the first royal consort for almost a century in Thailand, where the term refers to a companion or partner in addition to the king's wife. Mali's ousted president, Ibrahim Boubacar Keita, has been admitted to a hospital in the capital, Bamako. The 75-year-old politician was detained for 10 days by the military junta before announcing his resignation and was later free to stay at home. During mediation talks, he was quoted as saying that he was not interested in the presidency. The opposition has been calling for his resignation for months, blaming him for economic decline, corruption and a failure to contain a jihadist insurgency. Berlin has announced that Moore Street will be renamed after a black philosopher called Anton Wilhelm Amo as part of an ongoing initiative to decolonize the city. <laughs> Organizations supporting the rights of Africans and Afro-Germans have long demanded the renaming of the street. Moore is a racialized reference to the Muslim inhabitants across what is now Europe and North Africa during the Middle Ages. The term is dated, but many restaurants and streets across Germany still carry the name. Pope Francis has held his first weekly general audience with a live crowd since March, where he announced an international day of prayer and fasting for Lebanon. About 500 people attended the audience, nearly all of them wearing masks and keeping social distance, except for when the Pope walked near them. Francis met a Lebanese priest and bowed his head to say a silent prayer for the country, which is still reeling from last month's deadly port blast and rising sectarian tensions. And finally, the Venice Film Festival has begun, making it the first international event to take place with an actual audience since the movie world was put on pause due to the pandemic. With coronavirus cases rising again in Italy and elsewhere, a strict safety protocol has been put in place. Anyone attending from outside Europe's Shenzhen area will have to test for COVID-19 before departure. Temperatures will be checked and every second seat in the cinemas will be left empty. The festival will run until September the 12th. 
And that's your international news around the world in five. And now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos.